Praise the living God. Praise the living God. Beloved, you are most welcome to God's own elect word and prayer meeting this morning. You are blessed to be on this platform because we are coming to do spiritual exercise, very powerful spiritual exercise, which is the study of the word and also prayer. By this, we obtain the knowledge of the scriptures and the power of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says, or the Bible makes us to understand that the Lord Jesus Christ told the Pharisees that they are in error. Why? Because they don't know the scriptures or the power of God. And that is what we don't have to uh, find ourselves in. Hallelujah. And so I want to admonish every one of you uh, to come and join us that we may be able to do this spiritual exercise that we can obtain the power and the knowledge of the scriptures in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you to be on this platform in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And the topic is the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We did this in, um, um, uh, two days ago. Hallelujah. Yes. And today is the second day. Yesterday we did a different topic. And today we are going to continue what we started. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. You are welcome. Hallelujah. You are most welcome. Hallelujah. Mama Kofi. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. So before then, let us pray. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we give thanks to you. We bless your holy name for giving us this good opportunity to come before you once again, to study your word and to pray. Father, it is our prayer that we will understand your word and by grace we'll be able to apply the word rightly that at the end of the day, we may be able to give good account to you when you come to judge the world. We thank you that you have done this in Jesus' mighty name we pray. We also pray committing our brothers and sisters who are to join us, that Lord my God, move them by your spirit to join us. Any resistance on their way, may the Lord take, them, take it away in Jesus' mighty name and let your perfect way be done this morning to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, you are welcome, every one of you. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. So the topic is the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, we took our first scripture from the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, which reads, but, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So, we got to know that the first thing that the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to seek for is the kingdom of God and God's righteousness. Is the kingdom of God and God's righteousness. There is a two things he wants us to seek for. Because obtaining these two things, then you are done. There is nothing that you need again whatsoever. So he says, we have to seek for this and all other things will be added to. And praise the living God. That's powerful. And uh, we know that many people don't really understand the kingdom of God or the righteousness of God. We don't understand. So the question is, what is the kingdom of God and what is the righteousness of God? Hallelujah. Now, we first will tackle the kingdom of God. We saw that the kingdom of God is not what we see with our eyes. The kingdom of God, the people that the Lord Jesus Christ was preaching was not, was not something that we can see with our eyes. Jesus Christ indicated clearly in the book of Luke chapter 17, verse 20, that it says, Now, when he was asked by the Pharisees, when will the kingdom of God come? He answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. Now, last time I said that people try to take advantage on that, this very statement that is within you means 
Every human being has already possessed the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of God is within every human being's heart. And so they try to use it for the occultic teachings, and that is wrong. Jesus was saying, within you here means the kingdom of God is in their midst. Praise the Lord. Why? Because the kingdom of God stands for the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit. And the presence of the Holy Spirit was with the Lord Jesus Christ. He was full of the Spirit. That's why he was telling them that the kingdom of God is within you. So you know, tell them it's somewhere and somewhere. It's right there with them. Hallelujah. So the Lord Jesus Christ indicated clear in another scripture. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. It says, but if I cast out demons by the Spirit of by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Praise the Lord. Kingdom of God has come upon you. So the presence of the, the Holy Spirit is what we call it the kingdom of God. The presence of the Holy Spirit is what we call the kingdom of God. So Jesus Christ said that kingdom, uh, the Holy Spirit was, uh, will be in us and with us. So Holy Spirit is inside out of us. He's inside and outside of us. So he is in us and we are in him. That's the kingdom of God. Praise the living God. It's full of the power. And so when we talk about the kingdom of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit is the kingdom of God. And Apostle Paul spoke about it in the book of Romans chapter 14, verse 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So when you are exhibiting the character of righteousness, peace, and joy, within the Holy Spirit. That means you are in the kingdom of God. As last time I was telling you about how uh, uh, I was I was invited to a, a, a music luncheon at some place, as a, a different country. And the person who did a song with me was an ambassador. And so I had to go and stay in Ghana Amezi in that country. country. That is Liberia. So I was there, and where I was in that place, everything shows Ghana. Unless you go out before you know that you are not in Ghana. Praise the Lord. The same thing, you can leave the kingdom of God on earth here. When you are exhibiting the character of righteousness and joy and peace within the Holy Spirit. Mean in the Holy Spirit means you are moved to you are moved by the Holy Spirit to do those things. Praise the Lord. That is what we call it. Uh, the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And we learn that, and because of that, it is important to get the Holy Spirit in you and be in the Holy Spirit. That is why in the early church, the Lord Jesus Christ told the Pharisees that they should wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon them before they make any move. And so they waited and they were baptized with the Holy Spirit and they were full of the Holy Spirit. And before they made all the moves that they made. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And that is the kingdom of God. Are you getting the points here? So, um, and because of that, the, the early church were not joking with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We learned that Philip went to preach in Samaria and um, the people who believed in Jesus Christ were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, but they didn't, did not have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was not on them. And so they have to send Apostle uh, Peter and John to go to them and pray for them to receive the Holy Spirit. John, uh, uh, this man, uh, Apostle Paul, also went to some place and then met some disciples. And then he verified or he asked from them whether they have received the Holy Spirit. They said they have not received the Holy Spirit. He asked them, who, whose name were you baptized or into which, which baptism were you baptized and he said John he said no John was only came to uh, introduce the Lord Jesus Christ that the one who is coming after him should should be believed or we should believe in him hallelujah for our salvation so let, let him baptize once again and so he baptized them once again in the name of Jesus Christ and pray for them they receive the Holy Spirit hallelujah so the Holy Spirit uh, a baptism of the Holy Spirit is very crucial in the early days of the church 
But it got a point. People started bringing in some doctrine that when you believe in Jesus Christ, that is all. You have received the Holy Spirit. That is a lie. That's a lie. Early church were not treating the Holy Spirit that way. Praise the Lord. So people can receive the Holy Spirit before even they baptize. Or some people can baptize before the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes, yeah, the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes with the evidence. That is why Paul was able to ask the people that when you believe, did you receive the Holy Spirit? Praise the Lord. It comes with evidence of speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. And that is it. So I think uh, uh, I will take my time to teach purposely on, on that topic. But today we are looking at both the Holy Spirit and the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So we'll proceed. Hallelujah. And so we got to know that the presence of the Holy Spirit and with its um, evidence of speaking in tongues is what we call that the kingdom of God within us on earth here. So we live as a ambassadors on earth. Praise the Lord. We live as a ambassadors of Christ on earth because we are in the kingdom of God on earth. Just like ambassadors of other countries in other countries, they were in they are in the kingdom of that country in other countries. Hallelujah. So that is how God make our lives. So we have to understand the kingdom of God and that the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to seek for. We have to seek for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Then he also said that we have to seek for the righteousness of God. So these two things God wants us to seek for first in everything that we are seeking for. And if you go to church and don't have that ideology or don't have that mindset that you are going to seek for the kingdom of God first, then you have missed your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you that you are here to seek for the kingdom of God. And I believe that you have even found the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Now, we come to the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. We come to the righteousness of God. Because the scripture say, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His means God's righteousness. So we are looking for the righteousness of God now. Now, in the book of Romans chapter 10, verse 5, verse 5 down to 9, I'm reading. For most, for Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. So we have righteousness of the law and righteousness of God. In the Bible, we have righteousness of law and righteousness of God. Praise the Lord. When you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and for that matter, you are keeping the law, and you are doing every, everything possible to make sure that you are, are obedient to the law. That means you are establishing your own righteousness. That righteousness is called the righteousness of the law, not righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Even some Christians, though they have received Christ, confess him as the Lord, but they are behaving like the Pharisee believers in the book of Acts chapter 1. Uh, 15, Acts chapter 15, where the Pharisees who believe suggested that we should go back to the law of Moses and keep it. And the law of Moses stands for the com Ten Commandments and everything written by Moses. Praise the Lord. And if you keep the law of Moses, then you cannot forget the prophet. We've got a prophet prophesy in support of the law of Moses. So from Genesis to Malachi, they are all combined together as law. And so these Pharisee believers suggested to the apostles that they should go by this law of Moses. And the apostles rejected. And the apostles said, the law of Moses is a yoke that their fathers could not carry, nor they, they, they themselves could not carry, could carry. And so, hallelujah, nor they themselves could carry, so they, should, they would not go by it. And Apostle Peter said, we believe that by faith we shall be saved, or by grace we shall be saved. Hallelujah. That is it. So there are some Christians who claim to believe in Christ, but they behave like the Pharisee believers, and they go back to the law, practicing the law. Why? Because they say Christ did not end all the law, 
they claim Christ ended only the ceremonial law. And so the rest of the law, they can keep it. And that is a very dangerous thing they are doing. Because the Bible makes us understand that curse is upon everyone who does not continue to do all that is written in the book of the law. Hallelujah. Curse is upon anyone that does not continue to do all that is in the book of the law, do, written in the book of the law. That means you cannot choose one of the law and leave the rest. You cannot choose one of the law and leave the rest. It is not possible. Hallelujah. So today Christians are made to believe that Christ ended some of the law and left some. And so we can choose some of the uh, scriptures in the Old Testament and keep it as law. Praise the living God. And that is what Christians are deluded into. And many people are into this thing. Many Christians, almost every Christian uh, is into this thing. And uh, we believe that we, we are still Christians. That is not true. You cannot be a Christian and keep the law of Moses. There's a deep, hallelujah. There's a great distinction between the law, disciples of Christ and disciples of Moses. Great distinction between them. Hallelujah. We have to understand that one. So, the many Christians are trying to, hallelujah, uh, live by the righteousness of the law, but not the righteousness of God. They want to, they, they are living by the righteousness of the law, but not the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. And that is why we need to understand that one. Some people don't know that most Christians are, are under the law. Many people don't know. Yeah, sorry. Sorry for the disturbances of the phone. Sorry for the disturbances of the phone. Let's move on. So as I was saying, that many people don't know that they are under the law. Many Christians never know because their pastors preach Christ, preach cross, preach the death of Jesus Christ, preach resurrection, preach grace, and all those things. Hallelujah. And yet, they don't practice those things, but they practice the law. How? By telling them to pay tight or observe, observe it some days and seasons are special. Days like uh, Christmas, or uh, uh, seasons like Christmas, Easter, and all those things. Hallelujah. They are not Christian practices at all. Praise the Lord. Titan is not a Christian practice. Because doing that, you get yourself back into the law. That is why in the New Testament, there is nowhere the Lord Jesus Christ taught the disciples to pay tight, nor the apostles taught the church to pay tight. There is no record that, because they know that getting yourself back to the law, practicing any one of the law, you are obligated to do all. Galatians chapter 3, or Galatians chapter 4, verse 10, hallelujah, shows that day observations is not a practice of the Christians. He said, you observe day, season, year, praise the Lord, month, I'm afraid for you, I'm afraid for you, and Galatians chapter 3, verse 10, it's a curse is upon everyone who does not continue to do all by then, the first, uh, this in Galatian people had gone back to the Lord trying to practice the law. And the Apostle Paul was telling them that, you know what? You cannot choose one of the law and leave the rest. You must continue to do the 613 laws. Continue to practice all. 613 laws. You must continue to do all. You can't choose one and leave the, the rest. Praise the Lord. Because they all bounded together is called the law. You can't take one and leave the rest. That is not the truth that the people are present. So, some Christians are trying to, hallelujah, please God through the law. Let's continue. But man, who say, it says, for Moses writes about the righteousness of the law. The man who does those things shall live by them. So, you will be considered as righteous when you are able to keep all the law, 613 laws, when you are able to keep all of the, of the law, according to the scripture, when you make 
break one, you are breaking all the law. When you break one, you are breaking all the law. The same it is, is when Jesus Christ, they, they are saying Jesus Christ uh, ended some of them and leave it, that is lie. Because it's a chain of law. So when you ended one, when Jesus Christ ended one, he has ended all of, of them. Just as when you break one, you have broke all of them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When you break one, you are breaking all of them. The same thing when you end one, he has ended all of them. So you can't say that Jesus has ended some of them and left some of them there. That is a false doctrine. Now, the pastor should understand that is a serious false doctrine. Hallelujah. Let's continue. So you say that is it. So when you live by all, keep all, then you live by it. Verse 6 says, but the righteousness of faith speak in this way. So we have righteousness of law and righteousness of faith. The righteousness of faith speak in this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend to, into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So you don't say that you don't disbelieve in Christ that is closer to you and is with you and he has done everything. Don't disbelieve in it. That, that, is, that is the righteousness of faith. It says, or oh, who will descend into the abyss that is to bring Christ from the dead. So don't disbelieve that Christ was resurrected and don't disbelieve that Christ uh, is far away from you in heaven, so he can, he's not closer to you. Don't don't have that belief system in you. Hallelujah. That is not faith. And said, but what does it say? It says, the word is near you. The word is near you. The word of the truth is near you. In your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach so when we preach the word of faith concerning Christ to you and you believe, that word has entered into your heart and it has come into your mouth. What to do? To confess what you have believed. Hallelujah. The word of faith, they preach to them. How? What, what did they preach to them? They preached to them that Christ is the son of God. He came to redeem us from the law. He came to redeem us from the bondage of the law. And he died on the cross and was resurrected. So when you believe him, you also be resurrected with him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is the word of truth. And when you believe in that and you confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Indeed, he died and resurrected. Bible says by this, you, you obtain the righteousness of God. You obtain salvation. He said the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from dead, you will be saved. Hallelujah. So the, you, 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 you obtain your righteousness of God through your belief in the, and confession in the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. You obtain your righteousness and your salvation. Hallelujah. Your righteousness of God and your salvation. Through your belief in his, in his, his death and resurrection. And confess it. When you confess it, you obtain it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because the Bible says, we believe with our heart into righteousness. And we confess into salvation. So when the moment you believe that Christ indeed died on the cross and resurrected, meaning, hallelujah, you have believed into righteousness and you confess Jesus, confess this belief, you are saved. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. This is because, this is because the true, the law, God made covenant with the Israelite. Jesus brought the law to an end. Hallelujah. His death brought the law to an end. And we are saying that how it started was that 
Jesus Christ, uh, God made a covenant with the people of Israel. What is the Ten Commandments according to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 13? And this Ten Commandment covenant, the law, the people of Israel could not keep it. Hallelujah. So Jeremiah 31 verse 31 to 32, it says he's going to do a new covenant. He's going to have a new covenant with the people of Israel. That means he's going to change the commandment and give a new commandment. And the Lord Jesus Christ came to do it. So in the book of Luke chapter 20, 22 verse 20, Jesus Christ said, This cup is, is, a, is the new covenant in my blood, which I have I shed for you. Praise the Lord. Indicating that just as he said, in the Jeremiah's prophecy, he has fulfilled it. And so Jesus Christ made that statement according to the book of Hebrews chapter 8, verse 13. By that statement, the old covenant was made obsolete. That means it's of no use. Hallelujah. And that is the reason why the scripture shows that God officially uh, declared that the old testament or old law was not invalid anymore. According to the book of Hebrew chapter 7 verse 18, it says for on the, on the one hand, there is annulling of the former commandment because of it weakness and it unprofitableness. So the ten commandment did not come to help anybody. Praise the Lord. In fact, the Bible says it's rather through the ten commandments, sin took advantage and produced in man all manner of evil desires. And so it not come to help anybody. So God annulled it. God officially announced it that it is not valid anymore. By the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Hallelujah. So when you believe that Christ died on the cross, that means you believe that the law has come to an end. Praise the Lord. And by believing that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross, and for that matter, the law of Moses, the Old Testament covenant, covenant has come to an end. By that, you obtain the righteousness of God. Uh, the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 4 says, the Christ is the end, for the Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness to those, to everyone who believe, to everyone who believe. So when, the moment you have that belief and confess, yes, Christ has ended the law. Hallelujah. And because of that, I keep the new covenant. That confession give you the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that is what we call the redemption. Hallelujah. From the law. The redemption from the Lord. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. Apostle Paul made them to understand that Christ was born to redeem the people who are under the law. Hallelujah. To redeem them. Redemption of the people, uh, the redemption of the people from the law is also known as ending of the law because the law cannot operate on such people anymore. When you believe in Christ and God, Jesus Christ redeem you from the law, the law cannot operate on you. That is why it's called the end of the law. Praise the living God. And let's see, Galatians chapter 4 verse 4 says, But when the fullness of the time had come, God set, sent for a son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. For Know this for sure, that as long as a person remains under the law, is not considered a son of God. It's considered a slave. Hallelujah. It's considered a slave. It's not considered a son of God. So, we, by our faith in Christ's death on cross, then we obtain the right to be, ad, to be adopted as sons of God. And if you don't have that faith, if you don't believe in that Christ has ended the law, you are not considered a son of God. That is a serious thing that a Christian should, hallelujah, think about it. Amen and amen. Yes. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us, for it is written, the curse is everyone who hangs on the tree. That the 
blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Holy of the Spirit through faith. You see, so hallelujah, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Why? Because the Bible says, if you don't keep all the law, you are under a curse. That is why Malachi told the people who were not paying the tithe that you are under a curse. The whole nation, you are under a curse. And the same Malachi that the pastors of today will quote him, praise the Lord, and revoke this curse upon Christians who claim they have been redeemed from the curse of the law. You see how the Christian faith has been twisted? It has been twisted. And that's what people are running through. So the scripture says that the blessings of Abraham, when we believe that Christ has redeemed us from the curse, when we believe that Christ died on the cross to redeem us from the, uh, the curse of the law, to, to de deliver us from the, uh, from the law, to end the law, when we believe in that, then the blessings of Abraham, praise the Lord, will come upon us. The blessings of Abraham will come upon us. Here we are that this blessings of Abraham has been twisted in a way that we should pay tight that the blessings of Abraham will come upon us. That's, that's wrong. It's rather when you stop paying tight, when you stop uh, believing, uh, practicing the law, then you obtain the blessings of Abraham. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's rather when you st stop practicing the law, you believe in what Jesus Christ did, that you have been redeemed from the cross, uh, you have been redeemed from the curse of the law, then you obtain the blessings of Abraham. And the blessings of Abraham we are talking about is the Lord Jesus Christ and the promise of the Spirit that we receive by faith. The law is not of faith. So whoever keeps the, the law does not, cannot receive the Holy Spirit. So if today people are, are still keeping the law and it's, they are, they claim they have received the Holy Spirit and is speaking in tongues. Then something wrong has happened. Hallelujah. Galatians chapter 3, 21 says, Is the law then against the promise of God? Certainly not. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, which could have given life, truly righteousness, will have been by the law. The law could not give life. And so righteousness could not come from the law. Hallelujah. The law could not give life. The law could not give life. So righteousness cannot come from the law. So whoever keep the law can never live true righteousness. True life of righteousness can never. Because righteousness cannot come from the law. Praise the Lord. But he said the scripture has conf uh, confined on confined all the scripture has confined all and sin that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. So the scripture itself, the law itself, when we talk in the in the, old, in the in those days when we talk about the scripture, they are talking about the law. Hallelujah. So the scripture itself says everyone and and then the law is a sinner. Praise the Lord. So that he has condemned them. So that the scripture itself says that you cannot obtain righteousness from me. And because of that, you cannot obtain the promise of God from me. And so when you understand that and you come out from it, then the promise that we receive by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to us. Hallelujah. So as long as you remain in the law, trying to keep the law, you cannot obtain the promises of God. Hallelujah. 
So the righteousness of God is revealed through faith. According to Romans chapter 3 verse 21. He said, but now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed being witnessed by the law and the prophet, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on, on all who believe. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So there is righteousness apart, apart from the law that we receive from God. That is the righteousness of God. And this is what Jesus Christ told us right from the beginning of his ministry. This is what we have to seek for. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is not difficult to get this righteousness, but it is hard to find it. Hallelujah. It is easy to obtain this righteousness, but it is hard. It is very hard to find it. Very difficult to find it. Praise the Lord. Mm. That is why we say, Jesus Christ says, seek for it. It is not difficult to obtain it, but it is difficult to find it. Hallelujah. Let's read some scripture from the book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 31. It says, I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Amen. Amen. May the Lord help his children to find this righteousness. Yes. So the Lord Jesus Christ made it clear that to find this righteousness, you have to seek for it. You have to seek for it. It's just around you, just right there. But you have to seek for it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And when you find it, it's not easy to, to obtain it. But to find it is very difficult. Hallelujah. So he says, I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Are we not paying that because we want to be right before the law? Praise the Lord. Are we not observing some seasons and days and other things because we want to be right before the law? Are we not keeping the Ten Commandments because we want to be right before the Lord? And say the righteousness does not come from the law. Praise the Lord. If the righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. So the death of Christ means he brought you the righteousness that you cannot obtain from, God, from the law. So with this, you could see that a modern gospel that we're preaching does not reveal the righteousness of God. It doesn't reveal the righteousness of God. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jews first and for the, the Greeks. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So the true gospel re reveals the righteousness of God. And this, is the true, the, the, this true gospel has been covered, has been twisted. The true gospel reveals the righteousness of God. Whoever preached the true gospel will let the people know that the righteousness of God comes from believing in what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross. His death on the cross that brought the end of the law. And for that matter, we don't depend on the law for righteousness anymore. 
but we depend on what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross. So the true gospel reveals the righteousness of God. But the modern gospel does not reveal the righteousness of God. The gospel that the apostles preach revealed the righteousness of God. So the people got the righteousness of God. Easily. But modern gospel does not reveal the righteousness of God. They preach as if they know the righteousness of God. But they don't, hallelujah, really present the righteousness of God to the people. May the Lord help us all. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20, 21. It says, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. In him. So we have to become the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. You believe that Christ has ended the law. And for that matter, you are going to depend on his commandment. By that, you obtain the righteousness of God. And you become the righteousness of God in Christ. We don't preach Christ, his cross, his whatever about Christ. Then after we finish, we tell the people that Christ did not end all the law. It's a, it's a, it's a deadly poison mixed with sugar and honey. It's a deadly poison mixed with sugar and honey and given to the children of God. Praise the Lord. So this is the righteousness of God. The Lord Jesus Christ said, we should seek for first. Hallelujah. That you believe that Christ has ended the law for your own righteousness. When you believe that Christ has ended the law, he gives you the righteousness of God free of charge. And from that on, time on, you are righteousness of God. And many people claim we are righteousness of God. They don't even understand what they are saying. They are saying we are righteousness of God, but they are keeping the law. They don't understand what they are saying. Praise the Lord. Christians say these things. That we are righteousness of God. Christians say, it. I mean, I'm hearing Christians, many Christians say, pastors say this to the church members, but they keep the law. It's so heartbreaking. In the name of our Lord Jesus. So, the Lord says, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness fresh. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added. It's two things. You receive the Holy Spirit and you believe that Christ has ended the law. That's so. You get it. You get a kingdom. The Holy Spirit will move you to do all the will of the Lord. And then believing that Christ has ended the law, also deliver you, redeem you from the bondage of the law. You are redeemed from the bondage of the law. So that's all. When you get this thing, the kingdom of God belongs to you. The Bible said the Holy Spirit actually is a seal that we, God used to seal us that we belong to the kingdom, indicating that we belong to the kingdom. Praise the living God. Wonderful. That's what we call it simplicity in Christ. Apostle Paul said simplicity in Christ. He say, I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent, the church will also be the man.
teaching of the church will also be corrupted from the simplicity in Christ. Salvation is simple. Believe in Christ. Believe in Christ. Hallelujah. And keep his commandment. You are saved. Believe in Christ and keep his new commandment. Love one another. You are saved. Love one another as Jesus Christ loved us. Love him. And this love one another, if you indeed believe in Christ, you, you do it without struggling. You will do it with us like because you give that strength to us. The Holy Spirit in us will move us to love others. Just as Jesus Christ loved. Praise the Lord. We will not struggle to love people. It becomes our nature. Today we are praying that we will be full of the kingdom of God and the righteousness of God. Jesus has made salvation very simple, but it is hard to find. That is what the Bible says. Narrow is the gate that many, few people find it. Narrow is the gate. Few people find it. Narrow is the gate. Few people find it. To find the gate is very serious. It's very difficult. Few people. Begin to give thank to the Lord. No, we should, we should celebrate Jesus Christ for that, for this. We should celebrate the Lord for this. It by His mercy, we were all having this false confidence that we are already in heaven. We are all having this false confidence. Yet, we are up lane. Come and see and look shabe bro tandalababa. In the name of our Lord Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Come and deliver. Lika bro yandalaba. Lo shabe bro kapa. Lika bra yabalaba. Ro kapa In the name of our Lord Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Come and deliver bro shabe. Lika bra yapa. Father, we give thanks to you. We bless your holy name. We adore your holy name. We worship your majesty. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of our Lord Jesus. Christ of Nazareth, we pray to you. Our King, our Master. Divine Father, Lord, Reka Bazutaliande, Leka Bazutandela, Father, we give glory to you in the name of Jesus. Boyandela Babalaba, Loka Bazutondelaba, Leka Babo Shandela, Laika Babalaba, Roka Bazutandeleva, Leka Brayapa, Leka Brayapa, Loka Brayapa, Leka Bazutandeleva, Leka Bazutaliande, in the name of our Lord Jesus, Reka Bozutanda. In the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our King, our Master, Divine Father, Lord, Loka Bazuta, Le Cabra Yababa, Le Cabazotan Deliva, Le Cabra Yaba, Lo Shamande Brocapa, in the name of our Lord Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, pray the Lord, my God, my Savior, my Redeemer, my Lord, God of Israel. Lika bazi ande, lika braya ba, loka bazuk tandiri ba, lika braya ba, loka bazuk tondela ba. In the name of our Lord Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, lika babo, loka bazuk tande, lika braya ba, loka bazuk tondiri ba, lika braya ba, loka bazuk taliande, loka bazi kabra. 
Rikabos of Tondaraba, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray the Lord, my God, my Savior, my Redeemer, my Lord, Rika Papa, Lika Praya Pale, Lika Praya Dalaba, in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying that the righteousness of God, hallelujah, we will, we will experience the manifestation of the righteousness of God in us. Praise the Lord. Any fleshly thumping that tried to cover the righteousness of God we have got, we have, we have received, may the Lord condemn it, and cause us to ex exhibit the righteousness of God in every aspect of our life. Righteousness of God. Anything try to cover it. Anything try to subdue it. May the Lord remove that thing from our lives. In Jesus' mighty name. Komaziane. Righteousness of God is love. Righteousness of God is love. You love. Hallelujah. You love one another. You don't have hatred. You don't have grudge. You don't have anything. You always exhibit Peace and joy. Come and We are praying for love. We are praying for righteousness of God. May you open your mouth and pray. Come and see May the Lord give you the grace to exhibit. May the Lord give us the grace to manifest the righteousness of God in us. In the name of Jesus. Anything covering it. Anything try to overshadow it. Anything try to, Lord my God, subdue it. Father, remove that thing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of our Lord Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, pray the Lord, my God, my Savior, my Redeemer, my Lord, my God, Monday broke up, Lika Brayapa, Loka Brayapa Lenda, in the name of our Lord Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, pray, give us the grace to exhibit the righteousness of God, the righteousness of God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, give us the grace to exhibit the righteousness of God, in the name of Jesus, command the Lord, Lika Brayapa, Loka Bazokta Bed, Lika Brayapa, Loka Bazokta Bed, Lika Brayapa, Loka Bazokta Loka Bazokta Bed, Loka in the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, pray the Lord, Mandeleba, in Jesus' mighty name, when you receive the kingdom, kingdom is the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, and when you receive the righteousness of God, the kingdom, which is the Holy Spirit, will help you to exhibit that thing, the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, God consider you as righteous because you believe that Christ has ended it. And God does not see you as you committed any sin before. And by that, you get the garment of righteousness. Then the Holy Spirit that is in you, who is the kingdom of God, will also begin to move you to walk in accordance with the will of God so that the righteousness, the garment of righteousness that is upon you, you will never tinder it. You will never defy it. Hallelujah. May the Lord give that grace to us as we have received the kingdom and we have received the righteousness of God. May the Holy Spirit move us to walk in accordance with the principle of the kingdom that our, 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 our garment of righteousness will not be tinted, will not be defiled. In the name of Jesus Christ, may you open up and pray. In the name of our Lord Jesus, 
Christ of Nazareth, pray the Lord, my God, my Savior, my Redeemer, Lord God of Israel, right kaba zoktan dalaba, le kabra yaba, lo kaba zoktan yande, le kabra yaba, lo kaba zoktan dalaba, le kabra yaba, lo kaba zoktan dalaba, lo kaba zoktan dalaba, lo kaba zoktan dalaba, le kabra yaba, le kabra yaba laba, lo kaba zoktan dalaba, le kabra yaba, le kabra yaba laba, lo kaba zoktan dalaba laba, lo kaba zoktan dalaba. Le cabra yapa, lo cabra zoktan de riba, le cabra yapa, lo cabra zoktan de la baba, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. Now we are praying that our brothers and sisters will find the kingdom of God and righteousness of God. Hallelujah. All those who are seeking for the kingdom of God and righteousness of God, and for that matter, they are in churches trying to please God with their, with, with, with please God by keeping that commandment, to keeping the law. May the law have mercy on them. May the law have mercy on them, and may the Lord cause them to find the narrow gate, find the righteousness of God and the kingdom of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. May you open up and pray. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters. Call Mandalaba, Le Cabra Yaba, Lo Shabe Bro Yandalaba, Le Cabra Yaba Labe, Lo Shamande Bro Taliande, Le Cabra Yaba, Lo Kamazuk Ton de la Babalabe, Le Cabra Yaba Balabe. In the name of our Lord Jesus, Raika Babo Shandalaba, Le Cabra Yaba, Lo Shaba Bra Yandalaba, Lo Cabra Zukton de la Babalabe. In the name of our Lord Jesus, Christ of Nazareth, pray the Lord, my God, my Savior, my Redeemer, my Lord God of Israel, Mande Bro Yaba, Le Cabro Yaba Labe, Le Cabra Yaba Bro Shandalaba, Le Cabro Yaba Baba, Le Cabra Ziande, Le Cabra Yaba, Lo Shaba Bro Yandalaba. Let your people find the kingdom of God. Let your people find the righteousness of God. Father, the Lord will be one seeking for the righteousness of the kingdom of God. Let them find it to God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, pray the Lord, my God, my Savior, my Redeemer, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. What makes it difficult to find the kingdom of God and the righteousness of God are the pastors who are teaching otherwise. Are the men of God, so-called men of God, who are teaching the otherwise. Praise God. That makes it very difficult. Because they find it difficult to believe in the simplicity in, in Christ. Many people think that as people, we, we as a, that shall not do this, that shall not do that, do, do that, do that, that, they are speaking the truth. So most, past, most people in this Ghana here, when they see pastor bashing sin, speaking against sin, you shall not do that, you do this, you go to hell, you do this, you go to hell, they think that that person is doing, speaking the truth. So when you present the simplicity in Christ to the person, doesn't want to believe it. He even think that he want to take her or him to hell. So by that, it make it very difficult. Very, very difficult for people to find the, 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 the kingdom of God and the righteousness of God. But to find the kingdom of God and righteousness of God is not in, in the preaching of bashing sin. No, it's not in the preaching of bashing sin. To find the kingdom of God is not in the part, but preaching of bashing sin. Praise the living God. May the Lord have mercy on us. Praise the living God. But the people think that in the church are the preaching that through, through, through which they can find the kingdom of God and the righteousness of God. No. Praise the living God. That is not true. May the Lord have mercy. We are asking for God that the Lord this morning will shower his mercy 
upon us, his new compassion upon us. By his new compassion, may the Lord deliver us from the delusion of the devil. May the Lord deliver us from every work of the devil against our destiny, against our salvation, against our elect. By the compassion and mercies of the Lord, may the Lord cause his beauty to come upon us and his glory appear to our children. May the Lord establish us in the truth. May the Lord God of Israel, by his mercy, Lord, uh, 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 cause us to inherit the kingdom and never allow us to lose the kingdom. May the Lord avenge us and save our life from going to lake of fire. In the name of Jesus, may you open your mouth and pray. Father, Lord, certify us this morning with your new mercy and compassion. By your mercy and compassion, let your beauty come upon us. And let your glory appear to our children. By your mercy and compassion, let the Lord establish us in the truth. By your mercy and compassion, protect us from falling from the, from the grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, by your mercy and compassion, move us by your spirit to do all that pleases you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, help us walk in the spirit and live in the spirit by your mercy and compassion. Deliver our soul from the powers of darkness. Deliver our soul from every manipulation, from every work of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, let the Lord my God fill us with your anointing. Let it be full of the power of the Lord. Protect us and put on us your complete armor. In Jesus' mighty name, call mercy and by your mercy and compassion. In the name of Jesus Christ, save our life. Save our life from going to lake of fire. By your mercy and compassion, deliver our soul from going to lake of fire. And avenge us, Lord, on the wicked one. Any accusation of the devil against us, Lord my God, clear it off. Avenge me, avenge the family, avenge the church. In the name of Jesus Christ, on the wicked one, in the name of Jesus Christ, deliver our soul from going into destruction. In the name of Jesus, any altar witchcraft manipulation against us be destroyed by your mercy and compassion. Let our name remain in the book of life. Give us the grace to cause our name to, to live a life that will cause our name to remain the book of life. In the name of Jesus, Lord, make it impossible for me to lose the kingdom. Make it impossible for all my children to lose the kingdom. Any of my children to lose the kingdom. Make it impossible for the church members in my ministry, both on ground and on in air to lose the kingdom. I pray thee, let Lord my God, your mighty hand be lifted for us. Give us victory in every aspect of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying for kingdom preachers that the kingdom preachers will be empowered and fortified by the Lord. That will be preached, will be preached the kingdom of God with power manifestation, deliverance, healing, raising dead. In the name of Jesus, may as we preach the kingdom, may the power of God be at work and bring deliverance to the souls of the people. In the name of Jesus, let there be testimony flowing. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray for great anointing the great grace, double portion of great grace that was upon on the, on the apostles to come upon us in Jesus' mighty name. Pray for unity. Any evil prayer offered against us, may the Lord nullify all in Jesus' mighty name. And may the Lord give us total victory that his name may be glorified in us all. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Come mercy and deliver. Lika brayaba. Loshabe bro yandalaba. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we give thanks to you. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Beloved, you are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed.
May the Lord bless every one of you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the Lord bless every one of you. Hallelujah. God willing, we shall meet in the afternoon. See you and bye-bye.